G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I want to share with you step by step how I use this R5 and this 100 to 500 to capture this image of a red cap robin. So the reason for me doing today's video is just to be open and honest with you about how I go about getting my shots. And I think it might help explain how many other photographers get their shots as well. I think for many beginners, they might see a shot such as this Eastern Yellow Robin and wonder how did the photographer get that? How did they get the bird isolated? How did they get the background out of focus like that on a nice perch? I know when I started, I was capturing shots like this Eastern Yellow Robin in the dense bush. I couldn't isolate the bird. I couldn't get those backgrounds. I ended up being pretty frustrated. I had some serious doubts about my ability and I was just wondering how they did it. So after doing some research and going out with other photographers, it quickly dawned on me that many of these shots were actually set up. What do I mean by set up? Well, the photographer has actually set up the perch, made sure the background's out of focus, and they've attracted the bird to that perch using water, food, or calls. The reason for setups is it's just easier to get high quality shots of certain species that are otherwise very difficult to obtain wandering around in the bush stalking them. Now, I want to be very clear that you do not have to use setups to get really nice shots. In fact, the majority of the shots that I like and that I prefer aren't using setups. You know, I love laying in the mud, I love crawling through the water and capturing behavior. However, this is not always possible and setups are just another way to photograph birds. All right, now that we've talked about what setups are, how about I tell you how I've used them to photograph birds on my property. If you're new to the channel, I'm in northeastern Victoria. I've got 130 acres of regenerating bushland that has lots of birds on it. So the hardest part in any setup is actually attracting the bird. And there are a few different ways of doing it. On my property here, I generally try and find where the birds are. So I've found some robins and I will usually, at the start, I'll just throw out some worms, hopefully that they can see them. And then they'll drop down, hopefully, and they'll grab a worm. And then they start to figure out that, oh, these worms are quite good. And then once the birds are coming, I actually then put them onto a perch or location that I want them to land on. Now finding a decent location is tricky as well. It's hard to know what will look good on camera. Basically what I'm thinking about is I sort of want the bird elevated on a rock so at the high point. I don't want anything directly behind the bird and I want to ensure that the background's far away. So we have to ensure that the bird's isolated. That's how we get those out of focus backgrounds. So sometimes the bird will land halfway down the rock and it kind of cuts the bird in half. And I do try to avoid that. I'm not saying it's a bad photo. It's just, I prefer it when the bird's up and you can see its legs and there's nothing directly behind it. So sometimes you might not actually have that natural rock or a location that's suitable for a setup. So let's just pretend that I don't have that. Um, so I want the birds to land on a rock so I need to find a rock that is conducive to a nice shot or a bird looking on it. Now, as you can see all around me, there's literally rocks everywhere. So it's just a matter of walking around and finding a rock that I quite like. And I did have a look around and I came across this rock here. Um, so it's got a little bit of um, sort of moss on the front. I just quite like the shape of it. And because it's sort of flat, it's all gonna be in focus. And if we have the bird land on the top here, we might get the tail down one side. Uh, it's, the bird's not gonna land behind the rock. So we should always be able to sort of see its feet and get a sort of a nice pose. So this is the rock that I've chosen. So now I just need to place the rock on this um, mossy area where they come down. So we'll go and do that, set it up. The other thing I'm conscious of is the background that I want to get in the shot. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but in the background here, we've got all our wattles have come into flower. So these beautiful yellow flowers, they're called wattles or acacias in Australia. And I wouldn't mind having the yellow as my background. So now I'm gonna to have to set up the shot so my camera is pointing with that yellow bush in the background. So I'm conscious of that. So I'm gonna put this rock and know that that yellow um, tree is gonna be my background. So let's go and set this up. All right, so when I'm setting it up, you can see that um, there's our wattle, there's our rock. So I need to ensure that when I zoom in to say 500, that when we take a shot, that the yellow is um, out of focus and making up the majority of the background. So if I changed, you know, if I shot here, you can see how it's dark. I don't really want that dark. So really I want the bird here with this lighter colored background. That's ideal. And if we're over here, we can see that we'd have a rock and dark, and over here is all green. So I have placed this rock specifically with this background in mind. 
so that's how I'd, if I moved up or down I wouldn't quite have the background I want so I've got to make sure I'm in exactly the right area all right I can actually hear the red cap robin so I'm just gonna put some worms here and hopefully he'll come down and land on this so we just saw the red cap robin land exactly where we want it got down and got the worm it's probably gonna fly off but it might jump back up on this rock if we're lucky so let's see if it lands jumps back up onto the rock Yep, back up on the rock. Oh, look at that pose, sensational. Oh, I love it, love it. Oh, <laughs> how good was that? So exactly what I hoped happened. Put the rock there. I've got the yellow background from that wattle tree. It gave us a nice side, side profile and we managed to get some shots. All right, so we can see um, that we've got the bird on the, on the perch. I just and if we focus, we can take some shots. You can see the auto IAF is tracking the bird. We we'll put it into crop mode so I can get look, see what it looks like a bit closer. So just, there we go. This is probably the best pose of the lot. You know, I like quite like that side profile. We've got the space for it to look out to that nice out of focus yellow background. Overall, this sort of worked for me. However, my favorite shot on this rock was actually taken ages ago when two Jackie Winters landed on either, either end of the um, rock, which gave it that little bit more dynamic, I suppose. It just looked a little bit more interesting. All right, so now we have the birds landing on the rock. Let's change it up and let's put a dead timber stick, which they naturally land on anyway. So I've had a look around and I found a perch, which I think would be suitable. It's kind of got a point that for the birds to land on. It's nice and textured and weathered and old and looks somewhat natural. So I've actually just put that between two rocks and then I've gone back to my camera, made sure that the background is that still that yellow out of focus waddle and just waited. And sure enough, the birds have come and landed on that because that's now the new high point. And again, I've just taken lots of photos and picked the best pose. Now this Jackie Winter gave me a couple of poses. Um, I'm not sure exactly which one I prefer. I think I like the second image just for the eye contact. It's a little bit more, I don't know, personal or warm. It just appeals to me a little bit more. Um, let me know in the comments which one you prefer. So the other big benefit of setups is it actually lets you use affordable gear and still get really nice shots. So I use this exact setup with my really old, I think it's worth $40, a 40D, 10 megapixel Canon camera, APS-C, and I used my $600 400 5.6 took plenty of shots and as you can see on the screen they came up really well and I've got no doubt that if you've got affordable gear and you did set up you'd get shots just like this. Now we've got the birds landing on the timber we can go another step further and now we could potentially add some sort of um, flora to that some sort of plant or flower just to give it a little bit more interest and maybe make it a little bit prettier for those people who enjoy that sort of thing. So on my property, I've got lots of flowering rice flowers. That's these little white flowers. There's lots of them about. So I decided to prune a couple of those and I've actually strategically placed them at the front of the perch, sort of leading up. So as we can see, the birds continued landing on the perch and the flowers just add that little bit of extra. I'll be honest, when we start adding flowers like this, we've gone into the realm of digital art. Now there's a space for digital art in bird photography and there's plenty of people that are much better than me. And it's also really easy to get it wrong. I tried to do a setup using some of these waddles and I've actually placed the waddles upright. The birds landed on the perch, but it just doesn't work because the flowers just don't look natural. They don't naturally grow like that, just look slightly out of place. And overall, it's a fairly poor photo. However, this other shot using the rice flowers, I believe just the composition of it works much better. The flowers look like they're a little bit more natural and that's what we should be going for, as natural as possible in these created setups. I will concede that these setups start to get pretty boring for a lot of people very quickly. You know, it's just a bird on a perch with a smooth out of focus background, and I get that. However, I do believe there's a place for digital art. Digital art brings joy to a lot of people. They get to appreciate all that nature has to offer with its beautiful flora and fauna, and I don't see anything wrong with that. All right, the final step in the setup is actually getting the bird to land on a natural perch, and this is by far the most difficult. Lots of birds just don't like landing on these perches that have got flowers on them. They much prefer the rocks and the timber. So this can be a real challenge. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got spur wing wattle in flower all around the property. And this is a fairly rigid, sturdy sort of a plant. So I've actually thought, why don't I actually prune a couple of um, branches 
put them, set them up and try and get the bird to land on this flower. So I'm looking for a branch that has some obvious landing points for the birds, that the birds have somewhere to land and that will look good in a photo. So I've had a look around this plant and I've pruned this branch off the tree. I want to make it clear that plants in Australia are meant to be pruned. They actually appreciate it and they actually do better. Wallabies, kangaroos are pruning plants all the time and I prune all the plants I have around my house. So I haven't hurt the plant in any way by doing this. So we need some way of actually attaching this branch to something so that the birds can then land on them. Now I do traditionally use bucket perches. I did a video all about bucket perches. You're free to check out. But that would, offer, that would have it too high. I want the birds down quite low. So I need something low to attach this perch to. So I decided to use a gorilla pod that I've got. It's a very small tripod. I've used some reusable cable ties and I've attached the perch to the gorilla pod. Now I've put the gorilla pod where the old timber perch was. I've moved that out of the way. And then I've gone and set up and I just had my fingers crossed that the bird would land on this wattle. Okay, so we've got the setup. We've got the um, wattles. We've got that uh, yellow out of focus background. You can see the drama I've got now is that it's actually quite dark in certain parts um, just due to the shadows that have happened. So I've actually only got this tiny bit that's actually going to work. So the shadows are working against me. Um, we were lucky that the bird did actually land on the wattle. The red cap came in and landed momentarily. Um, so where were we? So we've got a couple of shots here where he's landed and uh, we can see that it's landed where we wanted it to. Um, so it's actually worked very well. Very happy with how that's hopefully going to turn out. But I did do this same sort of setup the previous day with a different type of wattle and I saw that a red cap robin was in a tree and it was going to come down and land. So I thought this bird potentially could land on my perch and when they land they obviously flap their wings. So with the R5 I've got 20 frames per second. You know I've actually focused on where I thought it would land in anticipation of the bird coming down. Now my focal length was, um, I was a little bit wider, so a little bit more space, and that gave me a bigger depth of field. Because if I was too close to the perch and the bird came in, it would likely be out of focus until it was right onto the perch. So I had to have a slightly bigger depth of field. I've ensured that my shutter speed was really high, two and a half thousandth of a second shutter speed. I think I was at F8, maybe ISO 800. And so that should give me adequate um, shutter speed. So I've just waited. I've seen the bird leave the perch. The bird's coming to my perch. And just before it lands, I just hammer the shutter. 20 frames per second, just going hard. The bird's landed. It's flapped its wings. It's down there and it's jumped down. It's got a worm. I've looked on the back of the camera and I couldn't believe it when I saw the shot on the back of the camera. I'd managed to capture a frame of the bird with its wings wide open. And I was just over the moon, to be honest. You know, I'd always wanted a shot like this and it just adds that dynamic movement. There's just something about it. It landed on the really nice flower. It sort of ticks all the boxes. Now, of interest, if we have a look at the shots immediately before and after that one, we can see just what an advantage the 20 frames per second offers us. Because if I'd used my old 5D4, I think it's seven frames per second, I may have missed that shot and not even got it. So look, the camera definitely performed extremely well in that example, and I managed to get that shot. So whilst the shot is set up, I still think it's gonna bring a lot of people joy. It's brought me a lot of joy, and you know I'm very happy to add it to my collection. And it shows you the power of these setups. So I do hope that this video has helped demonstrate how I and others go about getting their shots. Hopefully it's removed some of the mystery around some of those photos that you've seen and left you wondering how they've got them. Again, I want to stress that you do not have to do setups to get nice shots. There's numerous other ways to take photos of birds. I've done a video on that. At the end of the day, just choose the style which brings you the most joy. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, leave some comments below. I read all the comments and I answer them all. Um, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Subscribing basically all that does is put my videos in your feed when you open up YouTube. It doesn't um, cost you anything. All it is is just that my videos will pop up and it does help me. So the more people that see my videos, the more that they will get viewed. So look, I really do appreciate all the people that have subscribed so far. Um, thanks to those members that support the channel. It really does help me continue to make these videos. Until the next video, take care and see you later. Two and a half thousand um, shutter speed, two and a half, one, two thousand, two and a half, six, two and a half thousandth of a second shutter speed.